The sage continued, However carefully we look and investigate, we do not see anything other than the reality. So this careful looking and investigation is inquiry. It's vichara. If we keep on looking carefully and investigating, we peel back through the layers, through the notions which make up the parameters of our reality, until we come back to the indisputable fact of our own awareness. This is the reality. What the ignorant and the foolish see, we do not know. You're no longer operating in the realm of conventional knowledge, which can't discriminate, which can't see the difference between notions and reality. What the foolish and the ignorant see is immersion in their own notions. In the enlightened vision of the sage, all this is the pure indivisible consciousness that itself appears to be countless objects both sentient and insentient in the eyes of the ignorant. Some people would say, well it's, it's all obvious isn't it? This is reality, there's lots of things here, there's people here. Awareness or consciousness is completely overlooked and even those intelligent people that care to acknowledge it want to sweep it under the carpet and maybe even deny its existence. But if you're ruthlessly honest about it, then the fact that it's the underlying reality is inescapable. You couldn't be listening to this without it. You couldn't be seeing anything without it. You couldn't know anything without it. The one pure consciousness appears as the diverse dream objects in a dream. It's like in a dream. You wouldn't say there was any innate difference between the mountain and your mother in a dream. They seem different, they seem distinct. One's sentient, one's insentient. One has character, one has memories. The other's a mountain. And yet, we'll just call it all dream, won't we? We won't say that the mother in your dream was essentially different from the mountain. You would just say, it was all a dream. And that's indeed what it is. Even in our dream, we'll make the distinction between somebody sleeping and somebody being awake, won't we? But there's no such distinction either. This is all dream objects. It's all created by consciousness. All these millions of objects which appear in the dream become one again in deep sleep. We need to be careful with what's understood as deep sleep. It seems that we can take it literally here, but deep sleep is the attitude that we take when we're awake to our dreams. And one in whom the true nature of consciousness has been realized regards conventional reality as one who is in deep sleep. It has no relationship to reality. What most people consider to be real as reality has no relationship to realization of the truth. So one who is in realization of the truth behaves as in deep sleep. They're untouched by the dreams that are otherwise going on. Similarly, when this dream world appears in the infinite consciousness, that itself is called creation. When this itself enters into the equivalent of the deep sleep state, it is known as the cosmic dissolution. This is pure common sense. It might not seem like common sense, but this is the trouble we have with words. 
We often hear stories of cosmic dissolution and it's equivalent to deep sleep in the sense that you're no longer going to identify with it. If the cosmos has dissolved, what is there to identify with? So consciousness has to come back to itself. And even when creation happens again, the liberated one is in a state of deep sleep with relation to it. That's why it's called a dream world. No matter what we experience when we're asleep in our dreams, afterwards when we've woken up, we'll say it was all only a dream. Doesn't matter how intense, how vivid the experience was, how varied it was, it was all just a dream. We move away from it, we distance ourselves from it. We give it no heed, no importance. It was just a dream. <laughs>